The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Giselle Madrigal, and Giselle is with the Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation. Thank you for being with us, Giselle. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, you folks are doing such important work in our community touching the lives of so many people. And so I'm eager to hear, you know, what you're doing these days, some of the plans you have for the future. Yeah, so for people that don't know who we are, um, Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation, we are a nonprofit. So we advocate families that live in the tri-counties of Santa Barbara, Ventura, and Somos Obispo. Oh. And what we do is we try to provide them with financial assistance, emotional support, as well as educational support throughout their, um, their whole transition through the diagnosis all the way till after diagnosis as well. Wow, so it's not just Santa Barbara County, it's Tri-County. Yes. Man, you folks have a pretty broad area. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing to be able to touch um, many lives and be able to help as many people in all these different counties. And so, what is your role there? What do you, you work with families, I think, right? Yeah, so I've been working for Teddy Bear for quite a while now, and my role at Teddy Bear is Family Resource Specialist. And I am one of the first people that gets in contact when the family gets a diagnosis through the hospital, and they, we receive an application from them. And once they get approved, I am one of the first people that will introduce them to our organization, making sure that they get their checks, um, make sure that I build relationships with them to make sure that there are any other resources in the community that we can provide for them alongside the um, resources that we provide them as well. So that's how they get in touch with you. Is it, it, They're kind of referred from the hospital or the doctor? Yeah, it's usually referred through either a social worker at the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the times it's also from parents to parents as well. Sometimes we do have a parent that is already a Teddy Bear um, Cancer Foundation family and they are at the hospital and get to meet other parents and we'll introduce them to our organization as well. Alrighty, so can you give us some examples of um, the, the services that you provide to these families? Yeah, so we, for example, one of the things that we do provide is direct financial assistance for low to moderate income families. And we provide up to $5,000 for initial diagnosis with us. If then the child is then relapsed, then we provide another $2,500. Bone marrow transplant is another $2,500. And if a child passes for funeral fundings, we also provide another $2,500. Along that, we also provide educational support. So we cover the cost of tutoring um, with an mm -hmm. agency as well. And um, also provide the cover, covering the cost of neuropsychological testing which is recommended by a lot of doctors after a person has gone through um, any type of treatment or such. Mm. So oh. yeah, so we cover that. And then also educational advocacy and we provide, um, like I said, tutoring and um, uh, neuropsychological testing and emotional support like support groups. And um, right now we're doing a lot of project holidays like um, for Mother's Day, Father's mm -hmm. Day uh -huh. and any other holiday throughout the year. Oh gosh, these families are so fortunate that I bet they're just really surprised when they find out all the services that you provide for them at a time when they're devastated. Yeah, I mean, it can be very overwhelming in the very beginning. So we try to make sure not to throw all the services with them. And that's something about, I think that's very unique about us as we try to keep the relationship even after the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of families that we've had for plenty of years and we've even helped them um, even after their diagnosis for that as well. Um, so that's something that we're able to do with them. Mm. Wow, so I'll bet you've got some stories to tell us. 
Yeah, definitely. We have a lot. For example, one of the families, as I was just mentioning, um, even after diagnosis during the Aliso's fire, we had one of our families that was displaced during the fire. And mm -hmm. we've had this family, we've known them for 10 plus years, and we were able to actually help them to accommodate them for hotels during that stay. Um, so we've been able to do that as well with um, the help of the community and with the fundraisers that we've had. We've been able to provide those services um, and as well as um, getting being a voice for the families. Um, we had a story recently of a child who need, was in need of a bone marrow transplant and the family reached out to us and we were able to advocate for that family and get the word out there and then right afterwards we were able to provide them with financial assistance as well. Wow. So is there a, an age range that, we, you, know, that you accept? It's, if a child does get a diagnosis, it's from the date of birth up to the age of 18. But mm -hmm. if a child does relapse before their 18th birthday, we can support, uh, support them up to the age of 21 as well. Okay. Yeah. And then, okay, so let's say that they're 21 or 22. Uh, what, um, where can they go? What resources are available for them? There's um, not many resources out as much out there for them, so we try to support them as much as we can with um, support groups, and those are the things that are okay. very unique out there for families. Um, as they start getting older, that's something that we're really trying to help out and see what we can do for our families as they start transitioning and now becoming adults, and what can we do to provide them that support. But I think that's something that um, helps us as well is that it's not only the child but also their parents. So um, let's say their parents still need that help, we have support groups for them. Let's say they have siblings that are younger than them, we still have support for them as well. Um, for example, we also provide um, educational support for the, ch for the sibling as well, so tutoring mm -hmm. services for the sibling as well because it's so important. It doesn't only affect the child, but as we know, it affects the whole family. Oh, yes, yes. That, that is great. So you say you've been working with them for quite a long time. How did you get involved? Oh, my gosh. I fell in love with Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation. I went, um, I was at work, I went to this, um, it was an event where we were picking up some grant checks and mm. Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation happened to be there and I loved their energy and I was like, who are these people? Teddy Bear <laughs> Cancer, what? And I went home, I Googled them, I researched who they were and I was like, I want to work for them so bad. Oh, gosh. And I applied a couple times, even though some of those positions were not alongside what I needed, but finally the p amazing position that I have now opened up and the opportunity came along and I started working for them. And it's just an amazing place. I get to work with families, I get to work with the community. Um, I get to be able to be there for them during any time that they need and that's so important to me. Sounds like the organization and the families are very lucky to be able to work with you. Oh, thank you. They're, I'm very lucky to have them as well. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk about, um, do, you, do you folks use volunteers? Yes, we do. So mm -hmm. we are a very small staff and we have a handful of volunteers. Our volunteers are amazing. They are our backbone. They are the ones who help out during all the events, during things that we need for our families, deliveries right now, during Mother's Day, they're helping mm -hmm. us with deliveries for our moms. And so they are definitely our backbone. They're the ones that carry us through and we have I, tons of them. And um, there's definitely, they can get onto the website and mm -hmm. check out volunteer opportunities there as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. So yeah, they can go on the website, they can find out volunteer opportunities. Um, I don't know, maybe you do a little training or something for volunteers, depending on what they're volunteering to do. Yes, definitely. If there are the bigger events, I am not the one who's in charge of the events part of it um, for the volunteers, but something that we definitely do is make sure that we have them trained for events so that way they know exactly what it is that they want to do. Um, especially for younger people too, we try to find and pair them with what exactly it is that they're mm -hmm. excited about doing as well. Well, in having a small staff and serving such a large area, Tri-Counties, I bet you really do depend on those volunteers. Oh yes, we definitely really depend a lot on them. They're amazing. They, and we've had so many of them that have been with us for a very long time since the beginning of Teddy Bear. So we have amazing volunteers that have been with us from the very, very beginning. 
And so um, you're a 501c3 nonprofit. Yes. And you, I'm sure, depend on generous donations. Yes. We so do. while a person is on the website checking out all these other things, they could uh, hit that donate now button and make a financial donation. Definitely. It's definitely our website is very friendly users, so they can definitely go in there and check out all the different opportunities of ways that they can donate, ways that they can volunteer and give back into organization as well. And they might even you know, have someone that they want to refer to the organization and they can find out how to do that. Or Definitely. Um, we are there on our website and then they can also check us out on social media. Oh. Um, we are starting to become very active as well as there for all the different events that are coming up, all the volunteer opportunities. So make sure to check all, the, um, all that stuff out and it's definitely on our website so you can follow us there. Yeah, and I know you guys do events. I was at one not too long ago and it was fabulous. Oh, yeah. they are amazing. I love yeah. them. I always look forward to them. I, I just, they make me so happy and seeing our yeah. families and volunteers and donors and everybody. Yeah. And very touching, some of the stories that I heard that day. Definitely. Yeah. So um, I'll bet you collaborate with a lot of different organizations to make all this come together. Definitely. We do a lot of collaborations. Um, one example for exa is the ones that we partner with Great Potential and they are the ones that help us with the tutoring aspect. We also work with a lot of different um, facilitators throughout the Tri-Counties to help us run the support groups for mm -hmm. our families. So we definitely collaborate a lot and depend a lot on the community to help us out run, running our programs as well. Gosh, that's a, it's, it's a big, big job. Definitely. So do you have offices in all three counties or do you just serve the tri-counties from the office here? Yes, we just serve um, from the office here in Santa Barbara and then we just have a lot of different people and connections throughout the tri-counties that we can speak with as well. Do you think that most communities have an organization like this? There definitely are a lot of different nonprofits that help and serve families um, with ch with a child that's um, living with cancer, um, and then so we definitely try to connect them with, with them as well and try to become very close. And we actually do collaborate with them as well. Wow! So it, I'm just uh, amazed that you're able to. How many people do you serve? Let's just say in a given year. Oh my goodness! Um, can be anywhere about a hundred. Plus families. Mm. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. I'm yeah, amazed yeah. that you can serve so many people with such a small staff and some hearty volunteers. Definitely. And I think it's always about listening to our families as well and their needs are right now, for example, we're trying to do pilot programs where we're doing a family directory. We are speaking as, as we're getting to know a lot of our families, so many of them have beautiful skills and talents. Some of them have even businesses. So we're creating a family directory business where we can let people know in the community we have all these amazing people in our Teddy Bear, in our Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation families that can actually, that have these skills. We are trying to do one-on-one -on -one counseling as well with families. And we're also doing alumni programs where families who have gone through the same thing oh. can actually help out other families as well. That is a great idea. Yeah. Have you been doing that one for very long? No, we are just getting in the process of that. So it's something that we're talking about and trying to move along to make it happen because I think it's so important. And I know a lot of families have, they definitely want to be able to be there for other families and just talk to them and be there for them. Like, you know, maybe they needed someone there for them as well. That is a great idea. Yeah. So, um, gosh, I'm just imagining how devastating it would be for a parent to get that diagnosis. And, uh, do I, you know, would you say that most of the children are on the younger side when they're diagnosed? Or are they kind of all over the age range? It would be, I would say there's a range of it. We do see a little bit of the younger kids, um, but it sometimes, it, like I said, it really depends from year to year. It really, every year is different, but we mostly get anywhere between like teens and under, so 14 and under. Okay, so 14 and under, yeah. And so I, I like it when I hear you say that you serve them for years. I mean, 
I mean, you stay in touch with them yeah. and you support them uh, with counseling or, or support groups or that sort of thing. Yeah, we years. yeah we definitely try to build as much as we can, um, build a relationship with them, communicate with them, invite them to groups, invite them to family fun day events. Um, you know, during COVID, we haven't been able to do this, but we've been able to do virtual events for the kids, ah. and so just keeping in touch and building those relationships. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, the journey just doesn't end once the child is done with treatment, but there's a lot of things that happen even after. Oh, sure. So we want to make sure that we are there for them. You know, if they need someone, if they want to continue being with us, um, we're definitely there for them all the way through. That's great. Do you know how Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation started and how long ago and all that? Yes, it started in 2002, Nikki Katz, and she basically had a friend who had a child who was diagnosed with cancer and they didn't know where to go. They didn't have any help anywhere. There was oh. nowhere that they can um, have help from. And so Nikki Katz decided, okay, let's open something up around here. And you know, with the help again of the community, connections that she had, she was able to open up Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation and it is what it's now. And it's been almost 20 years and we're so excited that Gosh. it's been with us for so long and we've been able to help so many families. Yeah, and she was executive director there for a long time. Yes, she was. And now you have a relatively new executive director, right? Yes, we do. We do. We definitely do, Corey Pahanish, and he's been with us for, I would say, um, 16 plus months now. 16 months. Okay. Yeah. I was going to guess yeah. a couple of years so yeah. yeah yeah and so how's that working out he well, he came from outside of Santa Barbara right yes from San Diego oh, okay. um, he is amazing we love him as part of our staff he has been such an amazing person to have a great advocate for not just the families but for the staff and how we can um, be able to continue to like support each other to be able to continue to support our, our families and so he has been a blessing to come to Teddy Bear and I'm so happy and I know everybody at Teddy Bear is so happy to have him too. Oh good, I'm yeah. so glad. So um, we have a couple minutes left. Is there any other message you would like our audience to know about Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation? Yeah, I definitely do. I want people to be able to go into the website and check out all of our different programs. We have so many different ways that people can help us advocate for our families, continue helping out, volunteer opportunities. Um, a lot of the teens sometimes will give us a call as well if they need community service hours. We have those things available for them and just continue advocating and, and getting to know and if they do any if they do know of any families that are battling with cancer that live in the tri counties mm -hmm. connecting them to us because I, we would love 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 to be able to help them one way or another great let's just say you've got a family up in san luis obispo then you know do you does somebody from the foundation drive up there and talk to them do they come down how how does that work a lot of the times, the families are so busy. So for example, we do have some families that do live in San Luis Obispo and they, um, they, their hospitals in Stanford. So they have to go all the way up north. So mm -hmm. they are hardly ever there. We do have volunteers that will, that, um, that will drive to San Luis Obispo. Um, a lot of the times, they, if the families are in the hospital in Santa Barbara, they'll come here and we'll get to know them. Um, but it's a little bit, it's a little harder for, because it's such a far distance, but definitely those communications are so important. Um, something that we started doing, especially during COVID, was family Zoom meets. So getting to uh, know the whole family oh, during, cool. um, meeting, during a meeting and getting to know our faces because we weren't able to, you know, connect with them one-on-one -on, -one -on person. So that has also helped out, especially for families that live so far away. Right. And so, yeah, I can only imagine it was a real challenge during the pandemic. Um, but that's kind of a blessing, this Zooming thing that now you can do. And, and it really helps with the geographic distance in San Luis, Ventura, maybe down in Westlake or wherever. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. For example, support groups have been such an amazing thing for families. Our support groups were in person, and so we would have family-style dinner for the first half an hour, mm -hmm. and then we would separate and go into separate groups, the parents in one group, teens and children's. And then during COVID, 
we didn't know what to do. So we said, let's do a virtual um, groups. And so uh -huh. it was really great to be able to have that because it allowed for parents to sign on while their child's in the hospital, while they're in the room, while they're at home. So it made it easier. Families yeah. that did not have transportation were able to actually get those support groups. Yeah. So it has been a really great thing for us to be able to have that as well for them. That is, that's great. Something wonderful came out of something pretty challenging. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, Giselle, thank you so much for all of this work that you're doing, you and your team at Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation. Gee, and thanks for coming on our show to tell us all about it. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Yeah. And thanks for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>